Dr. Brooks here, and today we're going to have a practice day with adding and subtracting fractions. So just to review some things that we already know, we have one-sixth plus one-third. We know that we look for the common denominator. And when we look for the common denominator, we look for the number, the lowest number, that both of our bottom numbers, our denominators, will divide into. So in this case, it's 6 because 6 divides into 6 one time, and 3 divides into 6 two times. So in cases like this, it's easy to see because the bigger number is sometimes your answer. And then we start asking ourselves the question, what do you multiply 6 by to get 6? And the answer is 1. So that's what we multiply our numerator by. 1 times 1 is 1. What do we multiply 3 by to get 6? And the answer is 2. So we multiply this numerator times 2. So this is a plus. Just copy the sign. 1 times 2 is 2. And then we do the addition on the top. Our numerator is 1 plus 2, which is 3, over 6. And remember, we are practicing reducing these days, so you want to make sure that you have your answer in simplest form. 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3. 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 6 two times. So the answer is 1 half. I have 4 sevenths minus 3 over 14. So we are looking for the smallest number that 7 and 14 divide into. That result, kind of similar as to what happened in my first example, is 14. Because 14 divides into itself, obviously, and 7 goes into 14 two times. So now we continue and we ask ourselves the question, what do I multiply 7 by to get 14? The answer is 2. So I have to multiply this numerator times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Minus, this was a subtraction. What do I multiply 14 by to get 14? Well, that is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Numerator, I have 8 minus 3, and that's 5, over 14. And that's the answer. Now, what if we have something like 1 sixth plus 3 fourths? Well, I'm not just able to choose the bigger number of the denominator, like I did in example 1 or in example 2. So I have to think of what is the smallest number that both 6 and 4 divide into. Now some students right away will say 24 because you want to multiply those two numbers together and you know that they both go into 24. 6 times 4 is 24. That's true. And you could work out this problem that way and reduce at the end and have the right answer. But if we find the lowest number that they both divide into, then we can make our lives easier. We can make this problem easier to do. So 24 is true, but is there something smaller? Well, we know it's not 6 because 4 doesn't go into 6. So what the next thing? What if I multiply 6 by 2? If I multiply 6 by 2, I get 12. Does 4 go into 12 evenly? Yes, it, it, it does. So that has to be the next, the next possible answer because I know it's not 6. What is 6 times 2? It's 12, and 4 does go into 12. So I found my lowest common denominator, and I still proceed like I did in the first two examples. So what do I multiply 6 by to get 12? Well, that's 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Plus, what do I multiply 4 by to get 12? Well, 4 times 3 is 12, so I have to multiply the numerator by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 
2 plus 9 is 11, and I have 11 over 12. Two ninths minus a third. And if you think you're getting a hang of it, I would say pause the video for, for you to work out the problem. And if not, you can just keep it going and watch me do the problem for you. So my lowest common denominator here, what is the smallest number that goes into both 9 and 3? That's 9. By 9 by to get 9? 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And then what do I multiply 3 by to get 9? Well, that's 3. 1 times 3 is 3. On the top, my numerator is 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And the result is negative one-ninth. I'll work for you. Pre-algebra that goes with this practice day is G1 and it's in IXL under seventh grade math. Who needs a little more of a challenge, then I would ask you to watch the next video that I'm going to be putting up in the discussion board. It's an Algebra 1 level, and it is the next step that Algebra 1 is taking to um, graph systems of linear inequalities. Um, I let, I let pre-algebra watch just graphing a linear inequality if you did understand that and you want to try something a little bit more, then go ahead and watch that other video. It's about 10 minutes long. Um, they're, they're not difficult problems. And if you want to, you can try T6 in Algebra 1 in IXL. Okay? If you do that, just comment in the discussion board and let me know. This one here is mandatory for a practice day. So thanks guys. I hope everybody's doing well and have a great day.